All right, in the garage, I've got my home network out the way up there, but I've also got this rack full of stuff here for lab type things. And I've got this uh, rack mounted computer case here, which has been empty for a while. So what I'm gonna do is set something up to make that a VM host thing. Because in this room of shit, I dug up this old computer here that I forgot I had. And I think that used to be my desktop. Because these days, the desktop is this fanless thing here. So it doesn't make any noise and doesn't have to be fast or anything. It's just something to do generic stuff and that's fine for that. So I haven't used this thing in over a year. So I figure I might as well just blow it away and set it up as a VM box. It's funny too, I've got this old hard drive here that says 500 gig. And in here, where is it? A thousand gig in that tiny thing. That's how far we've come. Okay, I've got the rack case here and I don't know about this rusty fan there, but anyway. Just ready to put the motherboard in there and I've got cables for the front, so that'll be the USB, which sits over there, blah, blah, blah. There's a fan connector here. So behind here, some sort of fan, there it is. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna slap Debian on here and install it without a GUI, see what happens. Okay, so you can see my old Debian one up there. I'm just gonna boot from that disc and see what happens. Here we go. Install. I'll go through this and get back to you. Okay, I've installed that, just booting up, and there it is. All right, now I've got to rip all this shit out and put it in the other machine. So just one by fucking one, I need the power supply. Get out there. I just like doing it like this because it'll upset someone, and then I laugh. I just take a quick note of the uh, buttons at the front here too, because that's always a pain in the ass. All right, that's essentially all I need. The main board here with memory and all that shit on, and the power supply and the little you know, plate that goes over there. What I'm gonna do is blow some of this dust out of here first, since I've got it all open, you know, clean some of that shit up. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna put this plate thing in here, make sure it's the right way up. Just pop that in there. Now shove this thing in to where that is. And it sits on those little, uh, oop, threads for the screw there, so in there. Screw some of them in. Okay, I've just put the stuff back in there, and the uh, buttons and lights seem to work but I don't have a display. Now I had it plugged into the uh, graphics card here before, but I've pulled that out because I don't need that. So I've just got to muck around to get the onboard one working. Okay, so internal graphics is disabled. Just enable that. You'd think it'd be left on auto. That's what I should, probably should have done. Anyway, F10, save, piss that off. Okay, so now I've removed the graphics card, got it plugged into the onboard one, and it's all good. So I'll just pack this up and throw it in the rack. All right, it's in the rack, so I'll just turn it on. Much like that. You see back here, I've just got power and network in, nothing else. And it's still going to get its address from DHCP, so I'm just going to see what comes up before I set that manually to a static one. All right, now it's in and it's on, and I can connect to that from the desktop and do the rest of the setup. Okay, now I've SSH the box, and it's just got its IP address from DHCP as a normal interface. But since this is going to be a VM host, I need to make a bridge adapter so I can bridge through the network interfaces of the VM guests. So, first of all, I've got to install bridge utils. So what I'm going to do is edit the interfaces. So here you can see it's just the normal DHCP stuff. So for the actual interface, I'm just going to set that to be a manual and not actually set anything there. And then what I'm going to do is do another interface called, let's say, bridge zero. So interface for that, bridge zero, this is where I give it the address. And I say um, address 1218.100.150 netmask, 24 bit mask there. Gateway, yeah, 1254. And here I have to tell it which interfaces to use for that. So uh, bridge ports, think of it like a switch really. I'm going to use MP2SO because that's what it was called. And turn spanning tree off. So that should do. Save that and leave that. And I'll just restart this and see what happened. See if, what I call it, 150 comes back up. Okay, there it is, pinging away. So, SSH 100.150. And there it is. Beautiful. Now, you can see the address is on the bridge interface, not the actual interface. So I can use that bridge zero as the adapter when I set up VMs. Okay, now the actual VMs. So what I'm going to do is install Vert Manager, which does the whole thing. So the KVM install, as you can see, a whole bunch of shit there. 
it just does the whole lot and the manager for me to run it. Okay, that's done. So now I have KVMs. Of course, the non-root user can't do it, but you can see it's installed. Now back on this desktop here, first of all, I want to be able to SSH it without using a password. So SSH copy ID 1218.100.150 and put the password in once to, to do it. And now I should just be able to SSH it without needing the password. So I need that sorted out. Now on this local machine here, I want to run vert manager. So same as I installed on the server, I just run that here. And it brings this up here, but I get a uh, authentication I have to do because that's me trying to do it here. But what I really want to do is add a connection. So here I'm going to connect over SSH to the other machine. So 1.1.0.150 uh, and auto connect and see what happens. Okay, there it is. So that's me connected to the remote machine and I can start a new VM on it and go through all the stuff. Now this isn't probably normally how you do it, but it's one way of doing it. I've just got to put this image onto the host out there for now, just to show that I'm installing it from its home directory. Okay, now that that ISO is ready to go, I'll do that again. Go here, install from an ISO, select the media. You can see it's here now, and if it's not, just press that refresh. So that Windows 11 one, or Windows 10, choose volume, no worries. Now the operating system, Windows 10, Okay, so it roughly knows what it needs. Blah, 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 some storage. Yep. Now here, for the network selection, I have to pick which one. So I'm going to use a bridge device. And remember which one it was. It was BR0. So that's for that. And if I press finish here, it'll start installing straight away. Or you can customize the install before you go. So I'll just show you what's in the, the hardware. So this is all the stuff that it's going to do. If I begin the install, you should see it come up here. But you don't. Now that ISO is currently in the home directory, but it's going to have trouble accessing that. Where it really wants to be is var lib libvert images. So that's there, but I can't see that. So what I'll do is just sudo uh, copy in papa copy that to here. Oh, copy! I should have just moved it. Anyway, it'll get there. Okay, so now it's in there, even though I can't see it. So. Now I'll create a new VM and I'll use an ISO and I'll use it from a storage location, which is the default one, which you can see is var lib libvert images. Click that, choose that. Let's go. So Windows 10, give it a little hint as to what it is. Okay. It'll set some stuff. Boom, boom, boom. Hard drive. Yep. Now the network selection, I've got to select that bridge adapter that I made. So BR zero. And I'll customize it before I install just to show you what, what it's got as part of it. So here's all the hardware it's going to use. So just begin install. And off we go. Now I'm not going to go through a Windows install here. I just wanted to show you how you do this sort of thing. So I'll just piss that off actually. Force off. Be gone. Anyway, that's how you set it up. All right, so there's my U-Butte VM server there, ready to go install some juicy stuff. And the best part about it, as you saw, is it's free. None of this uh, buying licenses for this feature, that feature, it's just all there. So that's how simple it is to set up your own VM thing at home. By the way, I may or may not have had clothes on while doing this video, so that's why you don't see me in this one. But I'll catch you next time. Until then, take it easy.